for me, the passion comes from people and the relationships and the time you spend with them and the things that you get to do for them and in serving them. If people look or feel better, I just feel like they're gonna perform better in life. People wonder why I do what I do. I can answer it wholeheartedly and really easily on the spot all the time. It's something that I'm super passionate about and as you've seen or will see in this video, life really is all about relationships and life is about building something meaningful with people around you. And it's super satisfying for me to see somebody that starts right here in their career, in life, and as long as they leave a little bit better off, I feel like we've done our job. Tyler and I, we've been married for 13 years now and it's 2017, so that will date us as the videos go along. <laughs> um, and we really enjoy spending time with our kids. We've got four kids, two boys and two girls. Um, Tyler loves sports. I suck at sports and I'm really uncoordinated. However, my That's children, true. it's true. true, it's true, love them as well. So they're in all sorts of activities, um, softball, baseball, dance and tumbling and all sorts of things we also love to get outdoors and be active. So we hike, we go to the cabin, we snowboard, we bow, we do all sorts of things like that. So that's how we enjoy spending our free time as a family. And just a little bit about me from a professional side. So I've got um, all kinds of things going on, uh, but where I've spent the last 10 plus years has been in the real estate, financial planning, insurance type industry. Um, and I've helped thousands of different clients, whether they're buying their first home or want to save $50 a month to, to start a, a retirement or whatever it might be, to multimillionaires who are buying dozens and dozens of homes and, and have millions of dollars and they're acquiring businesses or whatever it might be and everything in between. Um, and one thing I really enjoy doing is looking at people's current situation, talking about their goals, what they want to accomplish and, and what their time frame is and helping them create a plan of how they're going to get there. Um, and that's something that's just super satisfying and, and rewarding to me to, to see people grow in that direction because uh, I feel like so many people are just are, are stuck or they don't enjoy what they do for their living or whatever the case might be and if I can help improve that situation over time and it gives them more more freedom or flexibility or um, or options to pursue their passions or whatever it might be, uh, it's super satisfying. So, um, you know, as you're talking to a lot of the other employees, they'll probably tell you that um, I've done credit repair classes or mortgage 101 classes or how to buy a first home. And it's something I like to insert into Amara a little bit so that you get more than just how to be a good esthetician or hairstylist or whatever your role is with us. Um, I also like to give you things that you can take outside um, and you can apply to your life. So so that's kind of, when I'm not at Amara, that's, that's primarily what I'm doing if I'm not coaching my kids. Let's talk a little bit about how we got started. So Lee, you went to aesthetic school when there was only one school and nobody knew what it was. The industry wasn't really thriving, at least in our area here where our hub store is in Orem. I grew up in Pleasant Grove, Utah, and there wasn't really estheticians. There were, you know, you'd hear of them at maybe a spa in Hollywood or um, in other places. And so I, my friend started receptioning at this little school that was brand new. And so she said, you should do this. You would love this. And so I went and checked it out. My dad checked it out with me. He still was really hesitant, um, wanted me to go to college. So I agreed that I would go to a semester of college of course my personality does not thrive <laughs> sitting down sitting in a classroom um it doesn't thrive with book work unless it's something i'm really interested in and so that semester was mostly all about just friends and and having fun that's when i enrolled and there was three of us in the class me and two other girls and that's it and that was the only place in the county to go to school 
And and before you move on from there, so I think this is kind of important for the story. Um, you worked a lot in retail before. Yes. So you worked in it in stores in the mall and then Buckle. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you hear our story and we insert the whole boutique and clothing line and all that, because we were really one of the first spas around to do that, um, a lot of that comes from Lee's background in retail. And so she was passionate about that and she knew the industry from having worked for, I don't know, three, four, five years mm -hmm. in, in, retail. in retail. Yeah, and I love retail. <clears throat> I think it's magical. I think there's nothing funner than helping people spend their money on really <laughs> great things, for real. So, um, so my jobs that I've had before then really helped to train me just in the mindset of serving people by selling them things that they really, really need and whatnot. And so I loved it. I loved my jobs. And then it went hand in hand with the aesthetics because that's just beauty. And I love beauty and fashion and all those things that go together that just make people feel better about themselves no matter what. And so once I enrolled in school and I was in retail, I was working and going to school both full time. Um, and I loved it. It was great. And my previous experience just helped my schooling and I think helped my success right from the start um, because it made me hustler it made me you know realize that I could talk to anybody help anybody um, talk about any of the services that I offered and not be timid or shy and just to take risks over and over again because in retail you're always talking to strangers and taking risks and and doing things that are kind of uncomfortable for most of the human race and so I think those things really helped to help me get out of my comfort mm -hmm. zone when I graduated school and whatnot so then so you graduated school yep. and then you got a job at affinity so it's, so it's a little salon that's right by University Mall, mm -hmm. and it had one little like treatment room, and they'd never done aesthetics before, before um, you got there, or had they? They did, sort <clears> of. <throat> they had a gal that um, had kind of din done it, but she was on call and, and more or less kind of came and went and stuff. She was darling, but she didn't really have a thriving business or anything in there. But yeah, they just had a little teeny tiny, like as big as this couch. I think room it wasn't it wasn't very mm -hmm. spacious but it worked so so you were there and um they didn't really give you clients or have walk-ins or anything like that you just really had to just hustle to start building your building your career affinity you were there for about five years mm -hmm. we'd gotten married during that time frame yeah. yep we got married um and the owners were going to sell yes and so that was kind of a big point in your career where you had to decide, what do I do? Do I stay here and have new owners come in and have change and who knows what? Um, we even looked at buying it, but we were broke and we didn't <laughs> know what we were doing. And so we didn't do that necessarily. Um, but you decided to, to start your own thing. At, at that point, we, Tyler and I had been married for just a little bit, a few months, and we had bought a home in Orem and it had an accessory apartment in the basement. And like I said, at that time, there wasn't really anywhere for me to go and work. I think I would have chosen probably to go and work for somebody or, you know, like continue my career because I loved being around everybody in the whole salon atmosphere and all the different services that my guests could get done doing services with me um, and services, you know, with hair and pedicures and all those things. But there really wasn't many options. There weren't just aesthetic treatment rooms everywhere where you could go wax and do facials and all that stuff. So um, we started looking into if we could put it in the basement of our home. Um, and we started to find out all the things that you have to do, like separate entrances where guests can come and they're not coming through your home, business licenses, um, health code or health department codes and, and licenses and all sorts of things that you've got to do and, and fees that you've got to pay and whatnot. But it, after looking at those and with Tyler's background of being really savvy in finance, which is great, we make a really great couple because hmm. I spend all the money and yes. we also save all the money. Yes. Um, <laughs> She's really good at spending. Yeah. But we have to be good at our own things, so I'm really good at that. Um, but so he was really great at just, he's in real estate, like he said, and finances and stuff like that. And so he kind of helped us get all those things in a row so that we did it right. So we bought dollar fabric from Walmart and sewed curtains. We bought like really inexpensive shelves from um, Walmart to house our skincare products and whatnot. Um, again, back then, the skin vendors, one of them we still carry, Glymed, they we were great 
to work with them and they were great to work with us to bring it into our home but I think it's because it was a more professional environment that we were able to because I don't think you can even get professional products into a home-based business um, but we were able to back then and we yeah we just bought like really inexpensive things and it wasn't it wasn't ghetto, it just wasn't what Amara is today where you see everything big and fancy and bright lights and all that stuff. Like to us, it was amazing, um, but it was, you know, an apartment and we had things on the stove and the kitchen countertops and we brought in clothing and, and started to do the whole retail thing because that's another passion that I had and I wanted to fit that piece together because um, I feel like I loved helping people when I was in the retail world with, you know, clothes mm. and shoes and, and events that they had to get dressed for and making them feel good. And I now got to help them feel really great about the rest of themselves, their skin, their beauty, their eyebrows and all that. And so I wanted to combine that together. When we first started, we went all local vendors. But yeah, it, it definitely wasn't normal for a hair salon. And there wasn't very many day spas anyways at the time. <clears throat> You'd have to go to Sundance or Deer Valley or something to have like a spa experience for the most part. Um, or probably up in Salt Lake, but in Utah County there wasn't a whole lot. Um, but none of them felt like a clothing store. Uh, when you went in as well. Like yeah, every no once in a while some had little knickknacks. They but... like would have maybe jewelry and stuff here and there, but no one had a full blown like clothes, shoes, swimwear, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I loved it all and I like to buy it all anyway, so we might as well sell it all. Yeah. But you have to do it right and you have to commit to it. So you'll see as you get to know our company better that we have dedicated uh, guest service um, teammates that, that no clothes and they assist Lee in the buying process and they know fits and fabrics and all those things that I don't even know that much about <laughs> but they know everything and we re-merchandise every single week and we treat it like a Nordstrom's or a Buckle would treat it. It's, it's a big emphasis for it, we allocate a lot of resources to it because we don't want it to just be it's in the background for our guests if they happen to want something. It's really about hey we want to have experts in that area that can help them um, and it's become a big part of our business and I think it benefits all the service providers and it really, I don't know, it's really worked out really well. It's been a process. It's not <clears throat> something that I think, you know, you look on the outside and Amara looks magical. You walk in as a guest and you feel important and magical, but you don't know all the behind the scenes and that's what we don't want them to know. We just want them to feel great. But, yeah. you know, for us that work here, there's something really amazing about feeling like you go home every day and you've really accomplished something and help somebody feel awesome and beautiful and so much of that has to do with retail yeah and we were in that first little location for yep. two years yep and we built up we ended up bringing on massage um tessa lee's sister became an esthetician we actually hired a another receptionist and so we had a few employees going in there yep. and it just got busy uh for that little location so we decided to build a house in linden um in 2006 this was yep. um and we designed this house totally around Amara. The whole basement was set up for Amara. I like to tell people, like people that still come to our house today and don't know that there was a Amara was in there, they still see parking lines on our driveway. And I think we could fit nine cars in parking spots and still get access to our three car garage. Like it's this massive driveway. And so we paid a lot of money for cement, right? For Amara people so we didn't tick off all our neighbors. Um, and we built this basement that has like 2,200 square feet that was all Amara. So the entire basement was Amara. And that's how we justified building this house because Amara helped pay for it. Um, and so, so we had a separate entrance, all these different things. And so, um, so we moved out of the little house and, and graduated to the big house. Um, and we were in that big house for how long? Two more years. Mm -hmm. So Lee gets bored really easily and like, <laughs> So you'll see a pattern, like every couple of years we're doing something big, something new, because uh, she, she gets bored easily. It's true. Um, how many employees did we end up having out of that house by the time we moved out? We had 10 employees in that house yeah. by the time we moved out of there. So it was madness. I mean, our upstairs like main kitchen was like the break room and like it was... Food for free. <laughs> we all hung out, I knew my kids. Yeah, it was really cool. We are really yeah. a tight group. And some of our longest tenured employees started with us there and have been with us for a long time or were with us for a long time until they moved on. But um, yeah, we really create a really, a really neat group. But we were in this house for two years and, and we were just busting at the seams. It was crazy. I mean, 10 employees in a house and a lot of people coming in and out. And 
Um, it was just nuts. And so we had to do something, either scale back and simplify um, or go bigger. So we decided to build a new location and, and go to a retail location. And one of the big things with that decision was to bring in hair. So up to this point, the first four years of Amara was 100% aesthetics. Um, it was all spa. We brought on massage, but we'd, nurse we'd never nurse practitioners, but we'd never done the hair side of things. And so we went out and we hired, I can't even remember, like 20 or 25 hairstylists yeah. all at once. Well, we, hired that, like, we hired 30 people total all at yeah. once, uh, whether they were estheticians or stylists or nurse practitioners or whatever. But or guest probably, services, probably 15, 15 to 20, 20 hairstylists. Hair and it was awesome because these people, these um, hairstylists just trusted us. Like we'd never done hair before. We had a good reputation. Lee Most had of them relationships. Were my guests, and I had yeah. been, you know, waxing them and stuff and so and they didn't have And they'd sent their guests to you yeah. for their aesthetic services. So it just made sense for a lot of them. Um, and some of those are st some of them are still with us today. Yeah. Um, and it's awesome that they had that that trust in us and belief in the very beginning. Um, so we built this new location uh, on 800 North in Orem. When we built it, it was only half the size that you see. And it was crazy blues, and I don't even know, what was all that black and white called? What was <laughs> it? Yeah, it's Damask. A different look. <laughs> yeah, completely different look. Um, but in the moment, it was amazing for us. We took this huge risk. We had to go figure out how to get SBA loans, and we had to convince the, the landlord that we knew what we were doing because he was all nervous to sell it to us or lease it to us because we were just this home-based business. And um, so we had to figure all of that out. and. We ended up making it happen. We opened. Um, it was stressful. <laughs> uh, you know, if you think about it, you know, 20 or 25 new service providers all moving their business on one day to one location, plus everybody else transferring. It was it was chaotic, <clears throat> uh, but we did it. Yeah. And, and our kids helped. They were three and two years old, and they were. We had clothes being delivered to the house. And they were like tagging the clothes yep. or the tag guns or any jobs that they could do, unpackaging things. Like we had everybody involved yeah. Yeah. in this move. And um, that's when your mom passed away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's part of this story. It was crazy. We were a month away, I think, from this big, huge grand opening and Lee's mom suddenly passed away. Uh, I didn't know you were going to bring that up. <laughs> um, but especially for those that were like along the, the ride for us, like, I mean, life happens, right? And, and sometimes you just have to deal with it. But yeah, Lee's dad came home one day and her mom uh, was passed away on the floor and she just gotten some random blood clot that she twisted her ankle the day before pulling weeds and it went to her lung. And, and you know, it's something we had to work through and 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 still move forward because there's a lot of people depending on us. I think that's something that we've really learned through through owning a salon is is you have this weight, this pressure, I call it a heavy backpack of all these people that depend on you. And you know, oftentimes you have to put personal things aside because, you know, now we have over a hundred people that depend on us. That's we're 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 part of of how they put food on their table or provide for their families. And um, sometimes you just have to work through things. Uh, but everyone was awesome. I mean, everyone supported us and really stepped in and and helped as much as they could. Like I've said from the beginning, our the staff that we have, the teammates that we get to work with, are incredible people and so nice and kind and genuine and care about the same things that we care about. And so um, I think that's one of the most incredible parts about our company. And it has been since the very beginning when it was just me and Tessa, because she's completely that way. As you'll know, she still works for us today. Um, to, you know, having over a hundred people, every single person is like that and wants to give back. And it took us a while to, you know, really maximize that space and become efficient. And, and we, we had to hire more employees. more managers and we had to put new things in, in, in play so that everyone had the support they needed. And so uh, once we started figuring that out, Lee said we need another location. <laughs> um, and so that's when we decided to open up a new location in Lehigh, uh, which opened up in, what was it, August, September? September, September of 2016. 2016. Yeah. Um, and he thought I was nuts. 
Yeah. Honestly nuts. And I told him, I'm like, this is where we need to be. We've got to be up here somewhere. And so because he's so great, he was like, okay, we're going to look into this. And then we made it happen. We opened up Lehigh. We hired how many? 40 ish. Mm -hmm. 40 -ish. Um, new, new team members uh, that all started at the same time. And really, it's gone as planned, which I don't know if it's supposed to, but we put together all these projections and, you know, the, the, kind of the story of what my, one of my main jobs is, I got to convince the banks and the lenders and all these people that we know what we're doing to give us money, right? So I put together all these projections and we've pretty much been spot on our projections. Yeah. Um, I think one thing that surprised us is the amount of walk-in traffic. Uh, because this location is different than the other. Yeah. It's in a, you know, there's a Cafe Rio next to us and there's all these restaurants and there's Harmons and, and so there's, there's way more traffic and, and just a lot more eyeballs that, that can see us and wonder what we do and they just wander in and so I, that's, that's been one of the pleasant surprises with it. I think that that's something that still makes us unique and I think no matter what we change, like Tyler said, we'll always change and grow because that's what successful people do and, and you always have to innovate and reinvent because there's always new things that are happening. Um, but our roots will remain the same no matter what. If I was shooting this video in 2040, our roots would still be all about this Amara experience that you're going to hear about. So welcome to the Amara family.